السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today I talk about my second visit to Jerusalem in the same year, 1997. The first was on the way back from Iraq, Baghdad, myself, Anwar, and uh, Abdul Wahid. The second one, after agreeing with American Near East Foundation in America to invite us for a visit to their office in Jerusalem, then to go to Gaza, inshallah. This was in August, September 1997. I took the plane, which is actually Al Al airline, and in the airport, of course, I was checked, يعني, randomly, يعني, by people, by the security of, of in the airport, actually. Then the, 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 the travel agent or, or the, put me at the last seat next to the toilets. I, I didn't care about this. And I was the only one who were not uh, was not Jewish at that time. But at the time, when the time came for prayer, Zohar and Das, I just made the jamma and actually prayed. Then everybody was looking at me because I look foreign, I look Muslim, and everybody was scared, stereotyping, scared. But this man could be one of the extremist or terrorist individuals. Especially, I had a, a, a strong beard at that time. Uh, we landed, of course, in Tel Aviv uh, airport and, uh, of course, I have been received by a welcome party for about two or three hours to check me, ask me, interrogate me, usual. And this actually, during the years of peace, and as Rais Al-Arafat was saying, we will make Gaza like Hong Kong and Singapore after uh, signing the peace agreement with the... the, the the government of Israel. But the welcome party in the airport, that was very, 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 uh, sir, no, very, very uh, not very surprised, uh, very expected. Then I was welcomed later on by the American Near East Foundation in their office in Jerusalem. Then after that, I stayed with them for a day or two to try to uh, understand the mechanics and mechanism, how can I open an office there. Before, people might ask me, why you did not open an office? Uh, uh, before that, because all the Palestinian organization in UK were begging us to leave them the big space to raise the fund for themselves, and there actually were actually it was a gentleman an agreement between us and them. We don't want to touch the Palestinian problem and you deal with it. But it became too much uh, for them to be the only people can raise the fund to do the work there. So that's why we decided to go. Uh, uh, and open an office uh, there. Uh, I visited Nablus as well, and I was uh, hosted by uh, the Zakat uh, committee there. Very nice people, extremely, extremely good individuals, committed, dedicated, sincere, and call it in Nablus. I took the car and to travel to from Jerusalem to uh, Gaza. It should be. Yani a short drive, but it took about more than three hours there because the many, many checkpoints inspired the fact that actually this was the year of the, or the, the this is one of the years of peace and safety and happiness and the year of honey and the rivers of honey and milk and whatever it is, as uh, uh, late President uh, Yasser Arafat was calling it, that he one day will make Gaza like Hong Kong or Gaza like actually Singapore and, 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 and. So in spite of the fact all this harmony, but actually the welcome party at every checkpoint, not only for myself, unfortunately, but for every Palestinian people, maybe I was treated differently because of my British passport, but actually the other people in uh, the Palestinian people were treated differently in a very humiliating way at that time, and even up till now. We arrived to Gaza. When I arrived to Gaza, I felt the spirit of the climate surrounding the air of Gaza, the sky of Gaza, the stars of Gaza, the sea of Gaza, different, 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 as if Gaza is telling you, welcome, 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 come and see it. This is especially after what we call the Intifada of the late, it is which led to the uh, Oslo agreement between the Palestinian and the Israeli uh, at that time. So I spent a few days in, in Gaza 
uh, with uh, American e e Near East Foundation as well as with the CAT committee. There's so noble people, so hardworking, so committed, so dedicated, so sincere. And you find the sincerity and the commitment of the individual people in Gaza is, is, is found not only in when the people meet you and talk to you, but in the air. You feel it. It touches you. It touches you. Men and women and young uh, uh, men and women as well. I was looking at the Mediterranean. I love to see the Mediterranean from Gaza scope, which is different to the Mediterranean Alexandria, to the Mediterranean Marsa Matruh, to the Mediterranean in, in, in any other European countries. This is Gaza Mediterranean, not like actually the other Mediterranean because of the climate, because of the philosophy of thinking, because of the culture, because of the spirit, because of the commitment of the people of Gaza. We wanted to open an office there. And I sat down with the official from the uh, Palestinian Authority and the man talked to me very flanky. He said, are you going to go to, to work with us from above the table or from underneath the table? I told him frankly, bluntly and to the point, if we want to talk, to work from underneath the table, from behind your back, I should not have come. Uh, I traveled myself to come all distance to be here. I came here in a very transparent way because we want to work in Palestine Authority area actually according to the local law that you put but independently and he was trying to convince me to try to put uh, to make a board of management or board of directors and to appoint one or two of them I said no 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 treat us like you treat the American Near East Foundation the country representative is the only one who will be in charge of the whole organization no board of management, no committee, nothing. And if you don't agree, the whole world is full of a lot of problems and we can travel and spend our money in different places. He agreed and alhamdulillah, we registered the office in, uh, in the Palestinian Authority area and I came back. This time was my second time. I wanted, actually I learned last time from, uh, from uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque, the lesson he gave to me, don't rush. This time I decided actually not to rush. I said, okay, I'm going to stay overnight in, in Jerusalem. Then in the morning, so I so I'm, at least I pray uh, Zuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and so on and so. And in the morning, I'm going to pray Fajr and I hire the car, put it to the travel straight to uh, uh, the airport. I decided it's a plan, I plan because, I, because the Karama of, of Al-Aqsa Mosque was done to me and they let me to sleep overnight in the car. So after finishing the prayer, I was rushing again. Again, I did not learn. I did not finish uh, Tasbih and the Salat of Samar Rasulullah and Dua and I was rushing. Soon I left my place of prayer. I felt in my stomach that I have some ache and I have to rush to go to the toilet and I was struggling for 15 minutes at least to find a toilet in 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 the area going from this area this area, because very early and nobody there till I found a toilet and at that time I was thinking seriously that I'm going to miss my flight finishing uh, uh, my uh, with the toilet and they have modu so I was trying to rush to find the car. Too many gates, too many arches in Jerusalem, in, in Aqsa Mosque. And for another 15, 20 minutes, I could not be able to locate the position of my taxi. So definitely, I'm going to lose my flight. Then I found it, then I asked the man to rush again to the airport. The message here was from Jerusalem, from Al Aqsa Mosque, telling me, why you rush again? A few months ago, you came and you rushed, and, you, and with my karama, I let you to sleep in the car overnight because you did not want to stay to pray, Asha, and Fajr. Today, actually, why didn't you stay to do Tasabih? And you are rushing again. So, my message here, in my manner and my behavior, whenever you visit these places, was hardly visited by people from abroad, please respect the dignity the credibility of the, and the status of the place. The place loved 
to see you sitting and staying as much as the place wants, not as you want. So this happens to you when you go to any mosque of Allah, any place of worship of Allah, when you go to uh, Al Madina, when you go to Mecca, and when you go to Kami, especially in the Jerusalem, in actually Al uh, Masjid Al Aqsa. Don't rush, stay with me as much as you can, and they will release you. So please behave well when you are visiting these places. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.